Yeah. Yo. What's going on, guys? What's going on, y'all? What's going on? It must be Jackie hey. Poppy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting y'all know this is a take two. Yeah, it is take two. We were clowning each other before this, before this one. But he don't know how to she cut won't, it off. She won't let me keep that. And keep the, the Lord the has told him other. about his little negative jokes, so he don't listen. Anyway. All right. So look, this I wanted to shout out to man. I've just been doing my research, and I I saw this in the Harriet movie back in the day. No, not but not back in the day. It was just some several years ago. But they didn't elaborate. So when you talk about the um, people that started Underground Railroad, there were truly there were only a couple blacks, but there were way more Quakers white quakers that has aided and assist with the underground railroad and people don't acknowledge these people they just like harriet tubman underground railroad but what about you forget about there was a president and they had a whole team whole quaker team and and native americans and people that that helped but on the primary team it was like six people six or seven but there's so many people helped the underground railroad white people native american people there's so many people that were part of that but history does not focus on that they only focus on harriet tubman so i wanted to um pull up because i wanted to see who are the um, caucasian contributors that were a part of this and, and i think quakers i don't know of any black quakers babe so quakers did i say did i say did I, I mean i'm just saying i don't think i, I don't unless there are put them in the comment section y'all i think quake quakers were on i mean it's already known that quakers were you know non-black people you, you know not to sound ignorant but i hadn't heard of quakers when a long time ago like when i first heard quakers because i was really? seeing them on the box of the oatmeal and stuff mm -hmm. i never had thought about that these were i thought that was just a brand or no something. yeah they're back in the day real people so this right here is like the eight key contributors to the underground railroad these eight high I don't know how I as it abolitionist because I say abolitionist. Ab abolitionist. How do I say it? Abolitionist. Ab <laughs> Help. They helped enslave <clears throat> people escape their freedom. So we're going to start off with first. You want me to read this? You must want to read it if you're asking me. Do I want you to read it? So the first person you got on there is Isaac Hopper. So Quaker, it says Quakers played a huge role in the formation of the Underground Railroad with George Washington complaining as early as 1786 <laughs> that a society of Quakers formed for such purpose have attempted to liberate a, a neighbor's slave look so he was already so he george washington was like man they get daggone quakers are, are messing with the neighbor's slave no the quakers were doing what they were called to do um and they were formed for such purpose they had a society of quakers formed for such purposes they attempted to liberate anti-slavery anti, i'm sorry anti-slavery set sentiments was particularly prominent in philadelphia where Isaac Hopper, a convert to Quakerism, established what one author called the first operating sale of the abolitionist, abolitionist? underground. Wow. In addition to hiding runways in his house, he put people in his own personal home. That's kind of scary, but hey, I love it. Hopper organized a network of safe havens and cultivated a web of informants so as to learn the plans of the, the fugitive slave hunters. See, think about it. Think how cool that is. So he's he's of Caucasian descent, so then he could talk to other people that are allies that Caucasian descent and find out what's going on because they would be trusted by the slave hunters because they were because of skin color. Mm -hmm. And um, what did it say? Though a tailor by Do trade. Though a tailor by trade, he also excelled at exploiting legal loopholes to win enslaved people's freedom in court. Wow. A friend of Joseph Bonaparte, the exiled brother of the former French emperor, Hopper moved to New York City in 1829. There he continued helping escape slaves, at one point fending off an anti-abolitionist Licionist. Licionist mob that had gathered outside his Quaker bookstore. Wow. Think about that. Think about you got a mob going against you. Think about the things that are probably been said about you helping them and blah 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 but wow wow you know you think about that that's tough that's heavy that's brave though that takes bravery that it takes, takes a lot of that bravery takes a lot of for bravery. a person to be willing to put their life on the line because you feel like whatever this movement is that is so wrong and you just can't be a part of it so he made a, a, a really dope contribution to society absolutely okay number two number two john brown john brown like his father like his father before him, <laughs> it's my turn, babe. You read number one, so it's my turn to read number two. Thank you. Like Drink some more throat cold. I didn't even know you were reading today. Go ahead. Yes. Um, 
please, they want me to. Like his father before him, John Brown actively partook in the Underground Railroad, harboring run runaways at his home and warehouse. Oh, that is so cool. And warehouse and establishing an anti-slave catcher militia. Wow. Following the 1850 passage of the Fugitive Slave Act. With several of his sons, he then participated in the so-called Bleeding Kansas Conflict. Wow. Leading one 1856 raid that resulted in the murder of five pro-slavery settlers. Another raid in December 1858 freed 11 enslaved people from three Missouri plantations. After which Brown took hotly pursued charges on a nearly 1,500 mile journey to Canada. Becoming ever more radicalized, Brown's final action took place in October 1859 when he and 21 followers seized the Federal Armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia, now West Virginia, in an attempt to foment a large-scale slave rebellion. Caught and quickly convicted, Brown was hanged to death oh, that December. Oh, that sucked. Wow. So he got he got killed in a line of a fire of helping. So let's see. Real scroll back down. He started. He did it 1850. So he did it for what nine years? No, because he yeah he started along, yeah. The following the. 50, established yeah, yeah, 1950, right. and then it says at the bottom 1959. That's that was the final action. Wow, that's still 10 years almost to dedicate your life to help others in that way. That's that's brave. And y'all know we got Harriet. I'm not gonna read Harriet because we already know who Harriet is. What? We're gonna She's go one of to my favorites, y'all. She we, really is. I always we, have loved Harriet as, as a kid. We're gonna do Thomas Garrett on the way north. Tubman often stopped at the Willington, Delaware home of her friend Thomas Garrett, a Quaker. Quaker station master who claimed to have aided some 27, 2,750 fugitive slaves prior to the outbreak of the Civil War. So prior to the Civil War, he was already he had already, you know, helped um, free 2,700 folks. I heard of Thomas Garrett. Uh huh. Along with a place to stay, Garrett provided his visitors with money, clothing, and food, and sometimes personally escorted them arm in arm to a safer location wow wow, wow that's admirable that is admirable that's still talking about is that still going head. on to him i think so yeah. yeah occupational hazards included threats from pro-slavery advocates and a hefty fine imposed on him in 1848 for violating fugitive slave laws yet he determined determinedly carried on let's go i should have done violence to my conviction of duty had I not made use of all the lawful means in my power to liberate those people, he said in court, adding that if any of you know of any poor slaves who need assistance, send them to me. Mm. As I am publicly pledging myself to double my diligence and never neglect any opportunity to assist a slave to obtain freedom. Uh, in court, he said this in court, if any of you know, um, by the way. Of any poor slaves who need assistance, send them to me, bro. I got <laughs> and I, you. I, I got and you. now I, I publicly pledge to myself to double my diligence in front of and in, never in, neglect in front of impressor, um, um, an opportunity to assist a slave to obtain freedom. Let's go. Now I wonder. That's check, hard. Check this out. What if while he's in court, you got the black slave owners in there too? I mean. I wonder how was that? Well, I'm, what I'm time sure, period was that? I'm sure. That was Cause not everybody later than this, right? This was the eighteen forty eight. This I don't know. I thought that was like in the nineteen something. It could have been. When we, they were talking about the black owned slaves. I don't remember the dates per se, y'all. We got William Steele, but William I'm going Steele. I'm I'm going down to the to the um um Quaker. Oh, okay. Levi Russell. Coffin. Levi Coffin. <laughs> Leave our coffin alone. All right, let's go. Known as the president of the Underground Railroad. Oh, wow. Levi Coffin purportedly became an abolitionist wait, at wait, wait, age. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. Where's the picture of Levi? Seven. Well, he must be in there, in that picture right there with all those people. Oh, wow. It say he's at age seven when he witnessed a column of chained enslaved people being driven to auction. Getting his start bringing food to fugitives hiding out on his family's North Carolina farm, he would grow to be a prosperous merchant and prolific station master, first in Newport, now Fountain City, Indiana, and then in Cincinnati. All told, 
he claimed to have assisted about 3,300 wow. enslaved people, saying he and his wife, Catherine, rarely passed a week without hearing a telltale nightmare, nighttime knock on the side door. Operating openly, Coffin even hosted anti-slavery lectures and abolitionist sewing society meetings. And, like his fellow Quaker Thomas Garrett, remained defiant when dragged into court. The dictates of humanity came in opposition to the law of the land, he wrote, and we ignored the law. Let's go. He started at seven. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. When you know you're calling or you feel like you off, feel. Off top. Yeah, obliged. Next, we got Elijah Anderson. Um, the, uh, the Ohio River, which marked the border between slaves and free states, was known and uh, uh, abolitionist. Does that say it right? Abolition. There's no you. If there was a you, it would be abolitionist. Abolitionist circle. Yeah. As the River Jordan for enslaved people on the on the. I'm right. Madison, Indiana, served as one of the particularly attractive crossing points, thanks to an underground railroad sale set up there by blacksmith Elijah Anderson and several other members of the town's black middle class. Light-skinned enough to pass for a white slave owner, Anderson took numerous trips into Kentucky where he purportedly rounded up 20 to 30 enslaved people at a time and whisked them to freedom, sometimes escorting them as far as the Coffin's home in Newport. The work was exceedingly dangerous. A mob of pro-slavery whites ransacked Madison in 1846 and nearly drowned an Underground Railroad operative, after which Anderson fled upriver to Lawrenceburg, Indiana, continuing wow. <clears throat> continue his activities. He assisted roughly 800 additional fugitives prior to being jailed in Kentucky for enticing slaves to a runaway on what some sources reported to be the very day of his release in 1861. Anderson was suspiciously found dead in his cell. Wow. wow. So they killed him. Hmm. Wow. Thaddeus Stevens. He kind of looked almost like um, Abe Lincoln. He yeah. With more hair. Okay. <clears throat> Pennsylvania Congressman Thaddeus Stevens made no secret of his anti-slavery views, a champion of the 14th and 15th Amendments, which promised black citizens equal protection under the law and the right to vote. Respectively, he also favored radical reconstruction of the South, including redistribution of land from white plantation owners to former enslaved people. Stevens even paid a spy to infiltrate a group of fugitive slave hunters in his district. It wasn't until 2002, however, when archaeologists discovered a secret hiding place in the courtyard of his Lancaster home that his Underground Railroad efforts came to light. Wow. Documentary evidence has since been found proving that Stevens harbored runaways. Other prominent political figures likewise served as Underground Railroad station masters, including author and orator Frederick Douglass and Secretary of State William H. Seward. So wow. what made them go in his house looking and all of a sudden they just found that? Probably um, tips. Somebody tipped them off. Somebody told on them. Wow. Plus, you at the time, you had people that were slave mobs or people that had slave catchers. You know, like they would yeah. send them off and, and, you know, probably spies. They're spying and they're seeing was this the what's going person? on. That was the last person. Wow. Okay. So these, I guess, I don't know if these were the only, but these were the top eight that... um did that thing and change change history as we know it yeah this was really really good i um i mean i knew that there were so many of them out there and it's just i didn't i knew thomas garrett but i didn't know any of the others james browns and then we got stephen thaddeus plus several others and it was like so brave i don't know i just felt like you know in order for you to do that and be a part and you know what you're risking you're gonna risk your life you're gonna risk your livelihood all of what you you know have worked for or whatever is going to be put on the line but you're willing because you know this thing is just so you know so unright, really yeah, it. so unjust that you said you can't. I can't be a part of this madness, and they were willing to risk it all for it. And then, but what I like about the boldness, you know, and that's just how you know I feel like believers have to be that way today. Yes, because there are <clears throat> beliefs that want to you know, or ideologies and groups that want to you know force feed and portray and make you feel afraid to stand up for what you know is right and yeah. what your belief is. And yet these abolitionists were like, please, I'm in court letting you know I'm still going to keep helping these people. 
Now what? That's right. So that's like me. I'm still going to let you know I'm going to talk about my God, the one true living God. Absolutely. I ain't never scared. I'm always going to talk about God because everybody willing to talk about their witchcraft and all the other stuff exactly. they doing. Exactly. When it's I talk like, about God, it get like this. What? Never so, that. I'm always yeah, this was really good. God. This was good. I'm glad you found that. For sure. Hey, man, like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose type of comment down in the section below if you want some more of this kind of content. If you got some more of this content, post it. See you later, guys. Let's go. Love you.